Welcome to Tips for Lawyers podcast. My name is Chris Hargraves. I am from tipsforlawyers.com and this is the podcast episode number 47. Today, we're going to have a talk about time management techniques for busy lawyers. And if you've met a lawyer who isn't busy, then I'd like to shake their hand. But most lawyers are busy. Before we get into that, I wanted to remind you of a couple of things. The first is the awesome free resource that I've called the Lawyer's Library. Head over to tipsforlawyers.com slash lawyer's library and join up today where you can get access to resources. You can get access to downloads. You can get access to my essentials course, which is a six webinar series on the core skills that every young lawyer needs to understand and appreciate and get a good grip on in terms of their interaction. The second thing is if you're enjoying these podcasts, and hopefully you are, otherwise why are you listening to them, then I would really value your reviews, your feedback, your five-star ratings on iTunes. The easiest place to get there is tipsforlawyers.com slash iTunes. That'll redirect you through to the Tips for Lawyers podcast iTunes page. Every review, every comment, every star ranking there really helps and helps keep the podcast visible and helps keep the exposure up there, wherever there might be. So today we're talking about time management strategies. And this is a particular passion of mine, and it seems a strange thing to be passionate about. But because fundamentally, I, as an individual, have a fair number of things to do. Um, You may not know, uh, I'm married, and I have three kids. So that in itself can be a full time job. The normal uh, and expected thing I do, of course, is that I do work as a full-time lawyer. Most people consider that to be about a job and a half by itself as well. And of course, I uh, run a website, build courses, develop other websites for both myself and other people, and I run this podcast. And I'm strongly considering starting a second podcast, which might possibly make me crazy. But um, time management is obviously pretty important with the numbers of things we do. Add on top of those sort of professional level projects and those personal projects, any sort of extracurricular activities like hobbies, games, sporting activities or whatever. And you really need to be adept at managing your time very well as a lawyer. Today, I'm going to focus primarily on the professional side of things. So the what you do in the office side of things. But You can take these principles and apply them. Obviously, you need to tweak them as appropriate. There are some things that are translatable into your personal life and others that are simply not. But time management is incredibly important for anyone who wants to succeed at a legal career. And the strategies I'm going to talk about today will hopefully give you a good appreciation of some fundamental areas that you can tweak or improve upon and start to get control of what you're doing on a day-to-day basis. You can find the show notes for today at tipsforlawyers.com slash podcast slash 47. And that's where I'll link up any articles that are relevant, any related resources. And if you need them, uh, you can get the Tips for Lawyers library uh, link there as well. So I started with this and I'll mention it again, but basically every lawyer I know and have ever met is busy or at the very least claims to be busy. And If you're going to manage your time well, I think one thing you need to get out of the mindset of is that busy is good. That's interesting, isn't it? Because if you're busy, at the very least, it means you're making money. But busy is not good. Busy is something we sometimes use as a badge of honor. And I have written an article about that, and I'll link it up. Because I think competitive busyness is a bit of a huge concern amongst lawyers. And we really need to get a bit of a grip on what is reasonable and what is unreasonable in terms of just how much we have to do in a day. The second reason I don't like to use the word busy in particular is that busy gives a semblance of out of control. And if you are out of control, then you have a problem. What I like to give the idea of is productivity, that I'm being productive, not that I'm being busy. I might have plenty to do, but the concept of busyness is not necessarily one I think we need to embrace and certainly not one we need to celebrate if we're working extended and extreme hours throughout the day. So some people get more things done than others. And they're not always the people who claim to be busy all the time. I'm not sure if you've noticed this, but there are some people who simply have a significant output. They 
maintain a steady pace, but they get a lot done. So this is the equivalent of taking a look between the difference between a marathon runner and a 100 meter sprinter. A 100 meter sprinter goes full ball. They set themselves up, they work themselves up into a frenzy, and then they fly down that 100 meters. Now, your legal career is not a 100 meter sprint. Your legal career is much closer to a marathon, and it is something you are going to need to manage for a long time. So you will occasionally have periods of extreme busyness. I'm not going to shy away from that reality of legal practice. But if your every day is following that same pattern, then you're going to have a problem because, as you may have seen, the 100 meter sprinters at the end of their race are a wreck. They put everything into that 100 meter sprint and then they can't do it again. Whereas you need to do it every day every week, every month, and every year until you retire. And so I think it's important to have a good grasp on the longevity and the proper strategic approach to take in terms of having high productivity without being out of control and without running out of steam halfway through the race. In terms specifically of time management, one of the questions that comes up a lot and people have strong opinions about it is whether or not you should do a to-do list. Now, I sometimes do a to-do list. I sometimes do not do a to-do list. It depends on what number of things I have uh, that I'm trying to maintain. It also depends on the priorities that I have going. If I know in reality I'm only going to get one or two particular tasks done throughout a day, then I don't necessarily write those down because I'm pretty capable of remembering the two tasks. Naturally, you'll get distracted and focus is an issue here, but we're not going to deal with that right at this moment. My view is that if you are someone who is at the receiving end of a lot of delegation, so you've got a constant flow of people asking you to do things, to contribute to other files, and you're not necessarily running the files yourself, then having a to-do list is probably pretty important because you don't want to lose track of what someone more senior than you has asked you to do, and you don't want to lose your ability to maintain control and your prioritization. And that's where the other side of the to-do list comes in. It's not just a list of things you do, it's a list to enable you to prioritize effectively. And there are any number of ways to prioritize, and I'm not going to deal with them in this podcast in particular, but I will link up in the show notes something uh, that I've called the tyranny of the urgent, where you can have a look at how effective prioritization is to occur. Because you cannot simply dance from urgent to urgent task. I'm sure you've noticed this. There will be a never-ending series of tasks that are labeled as urgent. And if you only do them, you will never get around to anything that's merely, and I use the term loosely, important. So, to-do lists. I think if that's you and you're juggling many other people, then you do need to have a to-do list. If you're someone who has the kind of practice that is heavily dependent upon diary entries, then you may not need a to-do list because you might have everything in your diary already. And there I'm talking about due dates, I'm talking about compliance dates and contracts and things like that. If, however, you have a constant flow of client calls or a constant flow of senior calls, then you might need to actually write those down and have an ongoing and organic to-do list that you can update throughout the day. It's also, I think we all know this, it's also very satisfying to cross things off your to-do list. Um, and that in itself might be a good reason to do them. Personally, I have a tendency not to do them. I do strategize my day, but I mostly do it in my head. Now, that might be slightly more risky than some people are comfortable with, but it's what I do, and I've been doing this for a long time, so I'm not too bad at it most of the time. In terms of time management, the second strategy I wanted to give you is the strategy of saying no to things, and it's incredibly important. The more things you can say no to, the better. Now, of course, depending on what position you're in, depending on what your firm is like and what your supervisors are like, saying no to anything might have dramatic and unintended consequences. But to the extent that it is up to you and it is reasonable to do so, the more you can say no to things that are peripheral to your overall strategy, the better. I'm going to link up two articles in the show notes. Um, and frankly, there's going to be lots of show note links in this particular occasion, but I'm going to link up two, and they are going to be how to say no to a senior partner, and that's a guest post by Mitch Jackson, who is himself a senior partner. So uh, read that from the perspective of a senior partner, how you can go about saying no firmly but appropriately. The other is my article on essentialism that I will link up, and we will be able to see how beneficial it can be 
actually linking those uh, together. And your ability to say no and your ability to identify what really matters and then cull out the rest from your life are two very powerful strategies in terms of time management because you don't have that pull of those things that you feel like you're not doing properly. Third thing I wanted to point out about time management in particular is that tasks we do have a tendency to expand to the time we allocate to them. So one strategy for getting slightly more done throughout the day is to try and allocate slightly less time to a task than what you're comfortable with. If you're given half a day for a task, then you will find that your task will take half a day. But what if you only allocated two hours to complete it? I'll bet you find that you're much closer at the very least, if not complete, within that two hours because we do time ourselves and we work in a particular style that means we get to the stage of completion at around the time we expected to get to the stage of completion. And the most obvious example here is university assignments. Uh, they, as you know, get allocated. You do a little bit of work and you do a little bit of work progressively, but there's always a flurry of activity at the end and they always get done within time. And if the time had been a week shorter, they would have got done within that time. So allocate slightly less than what you're really comfortable with. The next thing I wanted to point out is that people who are constantly in a flap running from urgent to urgent don't often have a strategic approach to what they want to accomplish throughout the day. They haven't sat down before the day and they're letting their agenda get hijacked. There's any number of ways in which your agenda can get hijacked and some are more avoidable than others. Emails hijack your agenda, clients and telephone calls hijack your agenda, and supervisors hijack your agenda. So this is why the best laid plans at the start of the day are normally knocked for six by about halfway through the day, if not halfway through the morning. So you need to be mindful of the fact that that is going to happen and you probably need to be a little bit accommodating for some of those things. However, if you have a strategic and meaningful plan and you can, so far as possible, say no to some things and you can stick with your plan, at the very least, you can hope to get the first few things done on your list. You don't have to claim that they're urgent because they're probably not, because if you're doing things in accordance with the plan, then you're going to be able to accomplish some things that are important, and they're probably going to be longer term strategic things as well. So plan your day. Some people do it the night before, some people do it the morning of. I sometimes do it on the bus on the way to work, or first thing as I'm having my coffee. It's a good time before the interruptions begin to strategize what you actually want to achieve throughout the day. I do think at this point, in terms of strategy and flexibility, it's important to say, look at the big picture. You are not the only practitioner in your firm, probably, uh, and it's important to realize that other people have things to do too. So you may have a strategy that revolves entirely around you, your files, your clients, and your plans, but that doesn't mean other people's priorities and accomplishments don't need to be taken into account as well. So work with other people. Be a contributor to the entire team and not just to your own success. Ultimately, if you are facilitating your team operating more efficiently, productivity will increase and you will be known as someone who actually manages to be an effective leader in that space rather than someone who is selfish, arrogant, and only looks after themselves. So be mindful of other people's priorities. Be insistent where you need to be, but be mindful that not everyone has the approach that you developed in the bus on the way to work. They have their own agendas and be aware of what's going on so that you can be sensitive towards those as well. Finally, client care. In terms of time management, the thing that always slips is client care, and I've been guilty of this myself, as I think has every other lawyer. Just because you're busy is not an excuse to not keep your clients up to date. And this generally comes out in two forms. First, underestimate and over-deliver. Now, I've been through this before, sometimes in terms of fees, sometimes in terms of timing, but here we're talking about delivery times. Don't promise something to a client that is an optimistic time frame unless you are certain you can do it. Don't be bullied into providing a time frame that's unnecessarily short by your client. Give a conservative time frame and deliver faster, 100% better, because you will get busy, you will get distracted, and you will get sidetracked by those things that hijack your agenda that I mentioned before. Although you can try avoid them, they will happen. You need to expect those things to happen. And your client will be happier if you 
serve them better and you ultimately do things faster than what you've promised anyway. The second is if you're not going to meet those deadlines, then have a system where you can let the client know. One of the most common complaints clients have is that they have to constantly follow up their lawyers. If you are on the front foot, you can advise your client that something hasn't happened, that it's taking longer than expected. You don't want to be the person who does that too much, which is why I suggest making reasonable estimates, not stupidly optimistic estimates. But keep your client up to date. Don't let the client care slip just because you've got a series of urgent tasks to do. And maybe that client care falls within the important category I mentioned before. Most often it's going to be client care, it's going to be marketing strategies, it's going to be networking, things like that that have a tendency to get pushed to one side when we get busy. Don't let them get pushed to one side. Client care is extremely important and at the very least, make your client aware of what's going on and, you know, sometimes this is harder than others because it's not your fault or you've done something in a timely fashion and someone else hasn't, but be engaged, be communicative and ensure your client knows what's going on without necessarily laying blame at the feet of anyone in particular. You can just let them know something's taking longer than expected, but I don't suggest doing it too many times because they'll just decide that you never live up to your promises and that will erode the trust that you are trying to build up with your client. So those are our strategies. Let me just run through them again and recap briefly. The first is to acknowledge that busyness is not necessarily a positive thing in those sorts of terms. The second, we need to consider whether we're going to bother doing to-do lists or not. I think there are some merit in to-do lists, but sometimes they just become a noose for our own neck or a rod for our own back, depending on what metaphor you want to use. The next thing to consider is saying no to as much as humanly possible, and I will link up some articles about that. You also need to consider how long to apply or to allocate for a particular task, and if you can shorten that by slightly more than what you're comfortable with, you may find that you're able to actually deliver more throughout a particular day. Next, adopt a strategic approach. Do a little bit of planning. Don't over plan. Don't spend half your day planning the second half of your day because that's stupid. You won't get things done. But plan a bit. While you're planning, though, be mindful of what's going on around you. Be aware of what other people need to accomplish and don't be a roadblock to those things occurring. Finally, client care. Don't let it slip just because you're busy. Manage your time in a way that you are serving your clients effectively and well. Give reasonable estimates that you can exceed rather than unreasonable estimates that you know you're going to fall down upon. Those are my time management strategies for young lawyers. We are all people who get very busy. Check out those links. They will help you about the tyranny of the urgent, about essentialism, and about saying no. They will assist you in implementing these strategies, and you'll be able to get more done during the day. Don't forget to go to iTunes and leave a review at tipsforlawyers.com slash iTunes. I hope these strategies have helped you. By all means, get in touch with me. If you'd like me to expand upon any of them, and I'd be happy to do that. This is Chris Hargraves, and this has been the Tips for Lawyers podcast. I'll see you next time.